Next, it's time to talk about technology in pretty good detail. Now, this is probably going to be the most boring part of the video for a lot of you because I'm going to go into real detail on this one. I'm going to cover technologies, what they do, the really important ones, and the ones you should probably skip out on. So, basically, here we go. Army Doctrine Technologies are basically, if you're going to go on defense a lot, if you're a country like Prussia, Russia, or France, invest a lot in Army Doctrine. What th these will basically do is that for the first four technologies, they'll give you higher dig digging camp, fort max level, and defense rating. With strike for five one is attack rating, but still gives you more digging cap here and fort level for the both of them. So as a, as a general purpose, it's good to invest in these as a great power. However, aside from that, you really won't find much of a use for most of these except this little technology right here, infiltration is what I call a priority one technology. You want to get this one before other people do. You really, really want this technology, and it's all because of the little picture you see here. Tanks are incredibly useful in so many ways. They can seriously mow down thousands of troops without taking hardly any damage themselves. But they are support weapons, so do keep that in mind. The Modern Army Doctrine is... Not much of one, but what I consider an example of a renaissance tech. If I refer to that statement, what I'm talking about is, if it's if the point of the technology isn't what it directly benefits you, as you can see here, but more along the lines of its inventions. These are going to be more in your culture and industry categories. Not so much here, especially considering that the Army Doctrine, Leadership, and Science are the only real ones with a lot of inventions. The Light Armament Tree, as you can see here, is what I call a Priority 2 Tree, in which case it's good to have these technologies in your local grind, but it's not something that's absolutely necessary. Basically, research them when you can, and don't feel bad if you can't research them. Don't go out of your way to, unless you're a real militaristic nation. As you can see, this tree is basically going to be the clear choice for militaristic volks. Most of these gives you, give you just the benefit of more attack, less combat with, and new infantry types. Engineer and guard here. And that's actually all the multi. For the first three, I meant. Machine guns is a priority one technology. Uh, machine guns is indeed one of the two most one of the three most important technologies in the game for major powers. I'll expand on that in a later chapter probably, but just, just, it's one of those that helps you colonize, as you can see here from minimum life rating. I'm not going to go into much detail, but to, under to understand its importance, basically the one reason, the one thing that secondary powers can really do is colonize, and that's what's supposed to separate them from the uh, from the tertiary civilized and uncivilized powers. It gives you a lot of prestige, a lot of events, and a lot of people. All good things, especially infamy free. Bolt action rifles is where the tree starts to get a little less important. Mm, the attack modifier goes up a bit, but as you can see, you don't really get under new inventions here on the side, and you really kind of have it superfluous if you're just going to be pacifist near the end of the game because this unlocks in 1900 very near the tail end of the game so unless you're diving for it you really ought to be investing in other types of technologies to try and get your score up but if you've got nothing else hey these can help you out in a war same with modern divisional structure also I know this is probably gonna make a lot of you sad but World War One basically never happens. Um, in fact, very few times you even get close to what would be considered a world war, and they're usually in the 1840s. The G GPs in this game are actually smart enough to the point where they don't try and get into mass casualty battles for little reason. In a way, the heavy armament just helps out your artillery. You literally don't need to put basically anything into this, Unless you have a decision that requires such, or 
you are going to be militaristic. This is a good renaissance t tank for artillery. Uh, if you're going to use tanks as a major doctrine. But otherwise, if you're using military a lot, go for it. If not, pass. Military science, more of the same. It gives you new military units for the first few. But the last one is another good priority technology. Airplanes don't really do that much in combat, but they have such a high reconnaissance level, your units will know basically what's going on at all times, and on top of that, you'll capture sectors nearly immediately, which is one thing I forgot to mention last time. This is also a very major renaissance tech, one of the... In fact, I think this has the most inventions of anything in the entire game. Leadership over here is yet another, if you're militaristic, get it, if you're not, don't really bother. There's no real priority technologies over here. It makes your armies a little bit better with morale and tactics, which are which basically just help you a little bit. And they're used for some decisions, but overall, militaristic only. The Navy category is probably the least essential category. Iron Steamers is the only priority technology here, and that's only because it's basically needed for a good chunk of the major decisions of the game. And this is just going to be one where I'm just going to completely pass on a place if it's not really worth their time. The Naval Doctrine allows you to build naval bases, which is good because um, of reasons I will I will elaborate more on once I get to the actual region level building episode. Naval bases do help you, so get them as what I call a priority three tech. Once you've gotten once you've gotten your light armaments, ship construction techs, and other such techs of the era, then it's a good idea to try and get those. Um, ship constructions are priority twos just because they have a lot of inventions that can help out your navy. If you're actually planning to be a naval power, then those are going to be good, and even if you're not, you really don't want to be stuck with, wood, with wooden ships at the end of the game. Because they'll basically get torn up to shreds. Steamers and on are more expensive versions, but trust me, if you want to ever even consider using a navy, seriously get them. Steamer technology at the very least, so you can get steam transports, which are infinitely better than the clippers you start with. Anyway, for the rest of them though, try to pass. Unless you're naval power, which I... As I said, highly don't re recommend, especially for beginners to the game. The commerce tree is where you go when you want money. There's very little more to say than that. Freedom of trade is one of the most important technologies in the game. It's not quite in the top three, but it's number four, definitely. Basically, it'll kickstart your economy if you don't have it. Bad idea not to have it. If you start in a nation... That doesn't start with it, research it as your first technology basically no matter what. For everything else, they're basically for specific purposes. Get financial institutions if you need more tax efficiency. Get monetary s systems if you want your bureaucrats to do better. Which, um, bureaucrats doing better is something I'll elaborate again more on when I get the actual region level. Um, that's gonna be a long episode like this one. Um... Economic thought and critique is essentially it makes your factories a little bit better. Not to the, it doesn't give you the crazy bonuses that the industry techs for these do, but it does help along more if you're an industrial nation and you get a lot of prestige out of these. I mean, crazy amounts of inventions as you can see. They're basically all Renaissance techs. Look at functionality. Beyond freedom of trade, is not really important at all. You get more diplomatic influence, but nobody is quite sure what that does, actually. The game never outright tells you. I'm not actually sure whether it's referring to how many diplomatic points you get per month, or how much you influence people as a great power. To be, to be honest, it's probably the latter, but it doesn't show you any benefit from technology for either one. And for the most of these, they have some inventions that can cause you a lot of trouble. Organization is another one of those that kind of helps your factories along more. Again, unless you're really heavily on industry, 
he really could just afford passing these up. Aside from early classical theory and critique and guild pr based production, most of these are essentially, well, not that important at all. But those two are required to civilize from a non civ nation, well, at least classical theory. But there is one technology in here, folks, that I do not. I do not want you to get, and that is market determined exchange rates, the last administrative efficiency technology. For this whole thing, hyperinflation starts increasing your consciousness and makes your fast release cost a lot more. You get considerably less of a chance here, unless your war exhaustion is high, but essentially if you have it, it's going to happen. It's just one of those that doesn't have a 0% option. And I'll explain a little bit more about actual inventions when I jump cut after explaining most of these. 